Today we're going to be talking about vision, which is the process by which our eyes receive reflected light, translate these stimuli into neurological signals, and send them via the optic nerve to the brain. Now there are five main structures that you should be familiar with for the test. Uh, the cornea, the pupil, the iris, the lens, and the retina. Now as you probably know, the cornea is the clear protective structure covering the front of your eye. It's lubricated by tears from your tear ducts and it's the first place where light enters your eye. The cornea also plays a role in focusing light as it enters. Now after light passes through your cornea, it enters the pupil, which is that opening that appears black in the center of your eye. And surrounding the pupil are the involuntary muscles and nerve fibers of your iris, which is of course the colored part of your eye. So these muscles control the amount of light that your eye allows in. So if you're in bright light, then the pupil will constrict, which restricts the amount of light that enters. And if you're in dim light, then the muscles will relax, allowing more light in. Now, directly behind the iris is the lens, which, along with the cornea, helps focus light entering the eye. What the lens also does is it adjusts the curvature of entering light because it's very flexible, and it finally projects this light onto the back of your eye, which is where your retina is. So lining the back of the eye is the highly sensitive retina, which is covered with millions of nerve fibers and photoreceptors. And it also happens to be the site of transduction, which is the process where visual stimuli are translated into neurological signals. Now the area where all of the retina's nerve fibers come together and form the beginning of the optic nerve is known as the blind spot and it's called the blind spot because you don't have any photoreceptors here. Now even though the retina is typically thought of as being part of the eye, it's technically a part of the brain. Once the retina's photoreceptors detect incoming photons, they emit neurological signals and these neurological signals travel along the optic nerve to the visual cortex in the brain. Now, psychologists, of course, aren't just interested in the anatomy of the eye. They're also interested in our perception and how we interpret individual properties of a particular stimulus. So for now, the property we'll talk about is color perception. Human beings have special cells in their eyes that allow them to perceive colors. These are known as cone cells. Now, cone cells are found lining the top layer of the retina, and they're most concentrated in an area called the fovea. Cone cells also come in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. And each of these sizes is receptive to a different wavelength on the color spectrum. So human beings are said to have trichromatic color vision because they have three different types of color receptors in their eyes. Cone cells are most useful in detecting the fine details of a visual stimulus and they function best in bright light. So the theory that each of our three cone cells is most receptive to a particular color is known as the trichromatic theory of color vision. You might also hear it referred to as the Young-Helmholtz theory the other thing about this theory is that it proposes that all colors are a result of some mixture of red, blue, and green color receptors. So if you've ever painted or used crayons, you've probably seen the effect of mixing these three primary colors. Now another theory of color vision is known as the opponent process theory of color vision. This theory was originally proposed by a man named Ewald Herling, and he believed that red, green, and blue weren't the only primary colors, but that yellow should also be included in the list. He also believed that sensory receptors came in opposing pairs, uh, blue and yellow and green and red. So maybe if you've ever met someone with color blindness, you've noticed that a person who has difficulty perceiving red probably also has trouble seeing shades of green. And according to Herring, this is because red and green color receptors come as a pair. Now rod cells, are, on the other hand, are not involved in color vision. Instead, they allow us to perceive black and white, and they function best in dim light. So let's review the eye a little bit. So far we've covered the basic structures, which are the cornea, the pupil, the iris, the lens, and the retina. 
Light enters the eye through the cornea, passes through the pupil, which is controlled by surrounding muscles of the iris. It's focused by the lens and finally projected onto the retina. There, it's translated into neurological signals and sent to the brain by the optic nerve. Color receptors in the retina, known as cone cells, allow us to perceive colors, and the trichromatic theory of color vision proposes that each type of cone cell corresponds to a particular color, while the opponent process theory suggested that our color receptors come in pairs. And of course, rod cells function best in dim light and allow us to perceive black and white.